This is a broken 40 inch Samsung television. What goes wrong is that when you try to turn it on, the light will just start up and blink maybe three or four times and then it won't kick on. And it will go through this sequence for minutes before it turns on sometimes. So after scouring the internet, I found a website that claims that these four capacitors go bad. So in this video I'm going to go over the process as quickly and clearly as I can showing you how I'm doing it and with any luck it will work. The first thing that I did was remove the back cover. There were 21 screws and before we go any farther, further, here take a look at the model number. Again, this is a 40 inch Samsung, model number LNS4051D. So assuming that this information applies to yours, let's get started. Again, the first thing that I did was took out 21 screws and the back cover, it just came right off. There was no prying necessary at all. And the next thing that I'm going to do is remove these cables. So we'll start in the top left. This fastener is easy enough. This part right here just needs to be squeezed like a clothespin. There's one down and two more on this side. Okay, got them. Next, let's move to this one. It's a flat ribbon. It's a little bit different, but the same basic pre premise applies. Squeeze and pull. This one gave me a little bit of trouble. If you look to the left here, this is the key. So you have to find a way to squeeze that out and pull at the same time. Be careful. Okay, from there, we move down to the bottom right for the last two. This one doesn't have a key, so you can just pull gently. This one does, the key's underneath. Please keep in mind that I've never done this before. We're learning this together, but from what I see, there are six screws holding the board in, and there will also be some little black clips in there as well that we'll probably have to squeeze in order to get it off. So let's get the six screws off first and then go from there. Okay, the black clips have nothing to do with it. It's completely free right now. It's really easy. Let me explain. Here's, here's one of the metal tabs holding it in, and it's also resting on these on the bottom. So it's just applying a gentle squeeze from the sides, and we can easily remove it. That wasn't too bad at all. Whoa. Okay, before we get to the board, I have to point this out to you. I tried to move this out of the way and I picked it up naturally. Be very careful because the entire top part comes off of the stand now that these screws are gone. So just be warned, I almost lost it. <laughs> it ended up, almost ended up in the dumpster there. Okay, let's take a look at the board. Now we can get a clear look at these capacitors. And the general idea is as follows. This little plus on the top allows the top of it to expand up. So if it looks concave then or flat, then it's still okay. If it looks convex like this, then it's probably in need of being replaced. So what we'll do is find the these pins that correspond to the capacitors that we want to remove, we just heat up the little blobs and pull them through. 
But for now, I have to go do some research and find out which I should replace of this group and what, what I should replace them with. So once I've done that, I'll catch up with you again. See you in the future. Okay, hi, I'm back. It's only been a week. That's how long it took to get this part. What I got was a five pack of 1000 microfarad 25 volt capacitors. Now, the ones that are here that I'm replacing are only 10 volt, so hopefully this will make them less likely to burn out again. And just to be crystal clear, here are the four capacitors that I'm going to replace. What else I have? Uh, soldering iron, some elbow room so I'm not frustrated, uh, some solder, some desoldering braid, and a moist sponge so that I can clean the tip of my soldering iron. I may or may not use the desoldering braid, I'm not sure yet. If you've never used it before or seen it before, all it is is a braided copper wire, kind of like speaker wire. I'll show you a close-up of it. What you can use it for is to suck up excess solder. It's like a wick, I guess you could say. A five pack of these things was something like $4, I believe. And the only catch is that you have to wait a week. Now, these are slightly bigger than the ones we're going to be replacing. Now, how I came to the conclusion that I should replace the four that I'm going to replace, which will be these four. I just read a lot of comments and feedback from people who have uh, supposedly fixed their TVs, and I took somewhat of an average of what everybody was saying. <laughs> that and these four parts are all similar and pretty easy to swap out, so I think there's a high probability of success here. And we will be replacing this one, this one, this one, and this one. This is one of the four that we'll be replacing, and luckily the numbers are printed right on the board. And to make it even easier, on the reverse side, they're also printed out, although they're very small, CS806 is one that we want to get rid of. Okay, let's step back from magnification for a moment. Just for me to explain, I have a pair of needle nose pliers with a rubber band on them. And what that's doing is it's grabbing CS806 and putting a little bit of weight on it. That way when I heat up these leads here, indicated by this piece of tape arrow, the capacitor will just fall away from a little bit of weight. I'm doing this for camera work, but when you're doing it, you might be able to just use your hands, heat up with this hand, pull the capacitor away with this hand. But just try to find a way that's comfortable for you. Okay, let's zoom back in. This target is very tiny, so I don't expect it to put up too much of a fight. I think my soldering iron is hot enough yet. This time let's try to bend the lead up straight and then it can drop out easily, more easily. Also bear in mind that you are right in the way. <laughs> so please cut me some slack. It will probably be a little neater on the other ones. There we go. I got the lead pointing up. If I get them both like that, they should drop out. Okay, sorry about that. I panicked. I was afraid I was going to lose it because I didn't have my iron hot enough. So I did successfully swap it out off camera. We'll try to get the footage again. Let's move on to CM811, which is its neighbor. I capture a good deal of foot macro footage when I make videos, but I have to say that soldering is a particularly difficult one. The tolerance is so small when you're working with things this tiny, and the camera is so in the way. 
And it's a skill that I don't really have developed all that well. I have to apologize. I really struggled with getting the footage. And I was able to successfully repair it. I just wasn't able to film it. I had to choose between the television and the video. But I will explain a little bit about what was going wrong with my process. And hopefully that will help you to be able to pull it off yourself. So what went wrong for me? And how can you avoid it? First and foremost, my soldering iron. It's one of those cheapies from back in the day when you could still go to Radio Shack. And it doesn't adjust for temperature. It, it only has one setting, which is not hot enough. And the solder that was on that power supply just didn't melt easily. So if you're going to attempt this project, a soldering iron is a very small expense in comparison to a television. Go out and buy one that has adjustable heat settings. This is the last time that this will be used on camera. The other place where I went wrong was in my technique. Let's pretend that that's the solder I'm trying to heat up. It does no good to try to transfer the heat that's in the tip of the soldering iron to your solder by touching it this way. If you're if you have to use a junky one like this, move the soldering iron down like this so that there's more surface area making contact with the solder. That's how I was able to get away with the procedure, even though I should have been using a different soldering iron. The other thing that enabled me to get away with this was the pliers. See, while I was heating it up this way, I was bending it back and forth with the pliers and so what little movement I gained as the solder melted, I was able to keep. If it were hot enough to melt all of the solder at once, then this would have just pulled away exactly as planned. But as it was, I had to do this rocking back and forth thing. And that's also why I wasn't able to film it. I needed both hands. There are a couple of things I want to tell you about the board too. First of all, when you're installing these things, look carefully, and there's a stripe on this. This stripe is to give the thing an orientation on the board. It will be marked on the board. You'll see it as a spot, but look. That's different from the rest. These do matter how they go in. There are also spots that tell you how to bend the leads, although it's probably not that critical. When you insert these in, bend them over towards the little black spots that are on the board and then you can cut them off with something like these end cutter pliers if you have them. So of course I set out to make a useful video and I'm not sure if it was or not but my goal here is to help you if I can. Uh, so you know ask me any questions if you want I was able to successfully fix my TV, and I'm not a professional at this stuff. I just dabble with soldering, and it's a tough skill. But I think this, this was a case where I think I just leveled up. I've outgrown this. It's time to move on. I'm going to go buy a better one. Uh, and also, help me out. If you have a, if you have a suggestion, a, a certain type of soldering iron for me as a novice, well, let's call me intermediate. If you have a suggestion for a certain type that you really highly recommend and you have a lot of experience, hey, uh, let me know. I'd be interested to hear it. See you on the next subject.